This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about how to run your own node and exactly show you how. Question, why run a Bitcoin node? It's because it's the only way to be truly self-sovereign in Bitcoin is to run your own Bitcoin node. And if you're not using your own node, that means you're trusting someone else's node to tell you how much Bitcoin you own and whether it's even real Bitcoin that can still be spent. If you're not using your own node, you need to ask someone else's permission to send Bitcoin. If you're not using your own node, you're leaking privacy to the person or corporation whose node you are using. And if you are using your own node, then you are a truly sovereign, self-sovereign Bitcoiner. And isn't that what you want after all? If not, you should really just be using Venmo or PayPal or Zelle, or Zelle and don't complain when they freeze your account because of your politics. The most common way to run a node has historically been to download Bitcoin Core, and I will put a link to this in the description notes below. But many Bitcoiners, including myself, are very unhappy with the people who manage Bitcoin Core at the moment. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to run a slightly different copy of the Bitcoin Core software that's been modified and that allows you to decide whether or not you want to participate in spamming the Bitcoin network with garbage. This software is maintained by one of Bitcoin's living legends, which is Luke Dasher. I'll put a link here to Pete Rizzo's account of all the things that Luke has done for Bitcoin, but he's been a major, major contributor to Bitcoin over the years. And you can argue that he's actually saved Bitcoin at various points in its history. This implementation of the Bitcoin consensus rules, this version of the Bitcoin software is called Bitcoin Knots. So all you really need to do is go to this website, make sure you're actually at this website verify the uh, the URL and if you know how to verify software before you download this that's a very good idea to do that a good idea to do that I don't want to do it in this video because it's gonna complicate it but that's something you should definitely learn how to do at some point so basically you download knots for your operating system and after you install Bitcoin knots it will begin to download the complete Bitcoin blockchain checking every block and every transaction since 2009 to make sure that they have been following the rules. So in Bitcoin, we don't trust, we verify everything for ourselves. And this is one way to do it with this software, which makes it very easy. And of course, Bitcoin Core, when you run it, does the same thing. When you're installing it, if it asks you to run it as a prune node or asks you about memory, memory or storage requirements on your own computer, you can configure that how you choose. It's okay to run a prune node where some of that history, this just means that some of the history is deleted from your drive after being verified that there's no funny business going on with those transactions. I was able to install knots and download and verify the entire blockchain in about, it was about 15 hours. I was sleeping for part of it, so I wasn't really monitoring it. And I'm currently recording this video on a 2023 MacBook Pro, 16 gigs of memory, Apple M2 chip, internet, about 250 megabits per second at its best, I think. And they probably throttle it when I'm not checking the speeds. But this is the equipment I'm using for this. I normally use a personal server, which I'll talk about at the end of this video, but I decided to try to do this from scratch on a laptop that I had laying around. Now, thanks to Bitcoin spammers doing these things on a Raspberry Pi as we used to do is no longer ideal. And this makes it harder for those to run nodes who cannot afford the hardware or bandwidth. And I'm aware that not everyone in the world can afford can afford hardware like this. You don't need you don't need something quite like this. But the purpose of this video is to show basically people in America and Europe and Canada and Australia and wherever else. Uh, parts of Asia, obviously, how you can do this on a laptop that you're currently using too. So you don't have to go out and buy more equipment. Obviously, you can buy more equipment if you want. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. So this is another reason it's important to fight the Bitcoin spammers because we don't want them bloating the blockchain and making it more difficult to verify transactions because there's so many of them. Your node is going to be running knots in this case, knots or Bitcoin Core, whatever you decide. I'm showing you how to do it on knots. Your node is how you talk to the Bitcoin network, as we said. Now I'm also going to show you how to connect your node to Sparrow Wallet. And this is software, free and open source software that helps your hardware wallet or software wallet talk to your node. In the same way, if you've ever used Trezor or Ledger, Trezor Suite helps your Trezor hardware wallet talk to the Bitcoin network through the Trezor node. Ledger Live does the same thing. So it's sort of this connective software that you can use to build transactions and safely sign transactions. Of course, your private keys stay on your hardware wallet, but this is the basic setup where you set up your node, you connect something like Sparrow, and then you can connect your hardware wallet to Sparrow. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. 
leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So while you're waiting for the blockchain to download and Knots to do, do its thing, you can also download Sparrow Wallet. It's very important to go to sparrowwallet.com. Don't go to any other website. And I'll put a link to all this in the description notes below. If you know how to verify or you want to figure it out, you can scroll down here and it will teach you how to verify the hash and signature of the software. But you can download it for your operating system and install it. Now, a lot of people, after they start using Sparrow, they're looking for some help online, some free help online, and they find either the Sparrow Telegram group or a cheap knockoff, and they claim that there's support. There's some support for that there. There are many scammers in there pretending to be support desks for Sparrow, maybe for Knots as well. So be very careful. Never, ever, ever give anyone online your 12 words, even if they claim that they can help you, even if they claim that they're from Sparrow. Good actors will never, ever ask for your 12 or 24 words. And if you do give this to a spammer or a, uh, if you do give this to a scammer, your Bitcoin will be gone forever and there's nothing that anyone can do to help you get it back. So if you've been scammed in this way, don't go pay another scammer to help you recover your Bitcoin. There's no way to recover your Bitcoin. So what you basically need to do is get Bitcoin Knots started. And then I'm going to attach a couple of guides here. And I'm very thankful to Leo who has been compiling these guides and share them with me. So be sure to go follow Leo on X. I will put a, uh, a link to his, his profile there. And these are the guides that he provided. So this one, how to install Knots and connect Sparrow to it, download Bitcoin Knots, open the Bitcoin Knots app, go to the option and enable RPC server. So I think on a Mac, this is all downloaded and synced. I go up here, I go to preferences, and I would just check this box right here, enable RPC server. I've already done it. I don't want to do a restart, but after you do that, you should restart Bitcoin Knots. Uh, let's just see the instructions here. Close and open Knots again. Yes, to apply the changes. Download Sparrow. Go to the settings and server. So let's show you how to do that now. After Bitcoin Knots is all done, it's done syncing. And one of the fun things when you download it and start to sync it is you'll see it will show you on the screen for example, I'm, ver I'm now verifying June of 2015, or I'm verifying the summer of 2017. You'll see it as it works through the blockchain. But when it's all done, it will let you know you will have already downloaded Sparrow. You're going to install and open Sparrow. And the first thing you can do, if you want to use someone else's node, Sparrow makes it very easy to do that. You just click on, uh, so what did I do? I went up here to preferences. You click on server. You click edit existing connection right now, just to show you, I'm using a public, uh, a public Electrum server or a public node. This is Bitaroo. You can use Blockstream. You can use, I believe this is probably Luke Dasher's uh, connection. These are all trusted connections. And so currently I'm using, I'm using a public, uh, a public node, but this, the purpose of this whole, t whole tutorial is to show you how to run your own Bitcoin node. So in this case, after you've got knots, all ready to go. You click on Bitcoin Core. You're not actually going to be using Bitcoin Core, but this is how you do it. And then you click, you can leave everything else the same here. Everything should be fine. You click test connection, and then you should see this message here. And then when you close this, you will see this switches to green down here. It shows that I am now connected at a certain, uh, a certain height to the, uh, to my, uh, to my Bitcoin knots node. And then if I want to open up a wallet, start a new wallet, I can basically go up here and do it in this way. Um, for example, we could say a uh, new wallet and we'll just call this uh, my cold card wallet. This would be a way of connecting your cold card. For example, I'm not going to do the full tutor tutorial here, but you'd click that. Now what you would do for cold card, if you wanted to use a connected hardware wallet, you would just click on this and then connect your hardware wallet to the USB ports. You could do this for Trezor or Ledger. If you have a cold card, which is a much better hardware wallet does, that doesn't support other crypto and ship coins, you would basically do it in an air gapped manner. You just click here and then you could, using a micro SD card, you could connect it. Um, and so now basically, if you do that, you will have Sparrow connected to your node, connected to your hardware wallet. There's a great tutorial that just came out that BTC Sessions did. I haven't watched this whole thing because I'm already familiar with how to do these things, but this looks like a really, really good tutorial and I'm sure it's up to the standard of all of BTC Sessions stuff. So I'll put a link to that in the description notes below. That'll give you more uh, ideas about how to use software wallets, hot wallets, 
and hardware wallets using Sparrow. Something I also talk about for paid uh, on my website at bitcoinuniversity.com, but the purpose of this video is not to plug my courses, but to show you how to do this completely for free, just using the existing software you have and all of these free online resources like BTC Sessions videos. So we've installed Knots, we've connected it. The next thing you wanna do if you care about spam is you wanna disable data carrier. And so I'll put a link to this in the description notes below as well. Open the Bitcoin Knots app, and then you go to settings, I guess you go to preferences on the Mac, and then you want to go to spam filtering. And it's a little confusing when you first see this. You, I didn't realize at first that I could scroll down. So it says click on spam filtering, and then down here, uh, running out of space here, lower the value of ignore transactions with additional data larger than to zero. And so if we scroll down here, we can see where that is. So that's right here. You want to set this to zero. Ignore transactions with additional data larger than zero bytes. This is something we can talk about more. But the nice thing about this is that Luke and Bitcoin Knots allows you to configure all this. And so you can really decide what you want to filter. And you can be a sovereign owner of your own mempool, which is just the waiting room where unconfirmed transactions sit. So then after you do the setting, and again, I'll link to this guide, uh, you click OK, restart Bitcoin Knots. And then I'm going to include a an idea, uh, a guide here, how to disable data carrier on Umbral Start 9, my node, my node Raspi Blitz and the knots uh, GUI, which is what we just did. Again, be sure to follow Leo. When you close your laptop, if you're using Bitcoin knots in this way, knots will stop updating your version of the Bitcoin blockchain because it's no longer connected to the internet. And then that will resume again. It will place basically play catch up and add all the blocks that were mined while your laptop was closed. It'll play catch up when you reopen your laptop and connect to the internet again. One way to avoid this inconvenience is to use a personal server like Start9. Again, we're trying to use just the equipment we have here in this tutorial, but if you have the money to spend, this is what I have. I have the Server1. These occasionally go on sale as well. Server1 is fantastic. You can also get the Server Pure, which just gives you a little more computing power. But the nice thing about Start9, there's also do-it-yourself versions. I'm not sure uh, it would work well on a Raspberry Pi anymore. You can try that, but you can also do it on mini PCs and things like this. And I'll also put a link here to Start9 in general so you can read about their operating system. Basically, this is an operating system that anyone can download. And when you do it, it gives you access to all of this open source software, including Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Knots, etc. So what I've showed you here is how to use existing equipment. Use your laptop, download Bitcoin Knots, download Sparrow Wallet, let them talk to each other, maybe add a hardware wallet. If you want the really easy way of doing this, you just buy one of these personal servers and connect it to your router, plug it in, and you're all ready to go. You're all set to go. You can also do this with Umbro, which I've used in the past. I'm currently uh, enjoying Start9 a little bit more. So I'll put a link to all this in the description notes below, as well as BTC Sessions uh, tutorial on how to use Sparrow Wallet and all my paid material as well. But that's basically how you can use Bitcoin Knots to run your own node and also filter spam. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.